today I'm going on patrol with a veteran of the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department. He's taking me to the site where the ugly underbelly of Humboldt's weed industry was exposed late one night. My whole career has really been as a result of marijuana in this county. Marijuana created a job for me uh, back in 1986. It's a pretty big change in the last 28 years from where we've gone to where we are now. This halfway law, you know, the Compassionate Use Act, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's created a lot of problems for the Sheriff's Department, has it not? We, we throw a great deal of resources at the issue of marijuana, and 69.8% of our homicide cases are directly related in one way to, to, to marijuana grow. It can be kind of the Wild West in a way. It's just gorgeous out here. Oh, it's beautiful. And it just goes for miles. I mean, it's... I mean, how many grows would be out where we can see now? Well, they're out there. <laughs> In these lonely hills, Humboldt farmer Michael Wilde had a 1,500 plant garden in the summer of 2010. As any farmer will tell you, turning a profit in a drought is tough going. And when his illegal agribusiness began to run out of water, he had to let staff go. The operation lost steam, lost money. There was a real issue with bringing water in. And he, the grower, decided that the best way to deal with these two immigrants was to kill them. And he did. He killed one and shot the other. And he got away. He actually got shot, I think, through the mouth. So if water was such an issue uh, in this crime scene, mm -hmm. what do you expect this summer's grow season when the drought is so bad here in California? It's going to be bad. Uh, I expect a lot of problems. Now that we're in 2014, when we hear about the war on drugs, I mean, where's that at? Uh, you know, as far as marijuana is concerned, I, I, I think it's a losing battle. So how much easier would your job be if marijuana was legalized in, in California? Well, it would certainly divert our resources, wouldn't it? This is what makes Humboldt and, to a larger extent, California so complicated. There are many legal growers here and thousands more illegal ones, making it virtually impossible to police. Sheriff Danny, Andy Park, nice to meet you. Thanks very much. You almost have to feel sorry for the man tasked with enforcing a federal law which is partially legal on a state level and that no one seems to abide by anyway. Trying to uh, put it together in a patchwork has not worked well. For, for, for the United States or for California itself. We are, uh, I'll use the word suffering from uh, an ill-conceived law. To me, it's either, either you're all in or you're all out. I'm, I'm down to two options. Legalization makes perfect sense. The other option, and there's only two, like I said, is to fully fund our eradication efforts. Uh, but right now, it's, it's, uh, it's very cloudy, very murky as to where we go with this. This is a um, veg room. Even legal medical growers like Mary Ellen acknowledge that the current law that sees her business thrive is broken and abused. The original intent was we have cancer patients, we have AIDS patients that could really benefit from using cannabis with wasting syndrome and all the other things that go on with the disease. And so it started because of that. And then it was like, you know, and you could take care of your grandmother and have a little grow. And then it just turned into this whole other thing. So it's all, it's all through the back door. And now the, nobody knows how to really stop it. And here's the rub. The price per pound has already dropped since Colorado and Washington legalized. Oh, probably about five years ago, you get $4,000 a pound for an indoor grow, and now you're getting like 22 to 25. She's unsure of her place in the new market. Some people are thinking it'll be more like down in the wine country where they have specialty things that they're growing. The whole other issue in our town of all the people that are growing. You know, there's kids coming out of, of high school or not even graduating from high school, and they can go work up at the Hill and make $90,000 in three months. But here, workers in the legal medical marijuana industry don't make nearly as much as I'm about to find out. So Mary Ellen has given me a job in the trim department. That's where the buds are kind of trimmed of all the excess leaves that don't have the uh, active ingredient, the THC, that you really want. It's just in here. You got it upside down there. Trimmer Mike has been tasked with teaching me the trade. And then you just want to take the big fan leaves off. 
like this. Yeah. Every summer, thousands of young people flock to Humboldt to work trimming weed. It's a perfectly legal job, just like fruit picking in Australia. What do you tend to get paid per hour as a trimmer? Uh, well, you don't get paid per the hour. You normally get paid by how much you trim. Okay. And yeah. is it good money? It can be, depending on how fast you are and how good the product is. So at this rate, how much would I make uh, you you'd, know, you'd in make, a day? You'd be making pennies. <laughs> <laughs> A little shaggy, but that'll do. <laughs> for a first timer. Yeah. Humboldt, and California for that matter, stands at a fork in the road for a county that has more at stake than just drug politics. Yeah, it'll become legal in California. It doesn't, I don't see any way around it. When you build a utopia in America, at some point you have to make a reckoning with capitalism. I think it is inevitable. Uh, I think that uh, uh, you will see a decrease in the uh, profitability of it. If California fully legalizes marijuana in 2016, as many believe they will, Humboldt County, the original home of weed in the United States, will never be the same again. There's a really popular saying in Humboldt when it comes to marijuana growing, which is like, it's what we do here. It is the lifeblood of the economy.